um, my name is Dr. Suraj. I am currently in my third year of post MD physiology. I am also in the degree level, second term in my BS degree here. So by the end of the second year of my working in emergency departments, I wanted to learn something new and I had always liked physics and math more than biology. Even in my PUC, I got a higher rank in CET engineering than CET medicine. So I just thought I'll take up, uh, I'll learn, I'll self-learn coding uh, just to learn for it, just for the sake of learning. I didn't have any use case for it in mind. So I took up CS50. It's a Harvard's uh, course online. It's free. So I just took it up. It was very interesting. And I it took me to a level where I could understand the basics. Then I, I, uh, I saw that I was not teaching myself more unless I was in a structured program. And by luck, the, the, around the same time, I found an ad for the BS degree. And I thought, uh, this is definitely what I need. And I, it'll at least help me stay on track. And it'll tell me what I need to teach myself. So that was great. And then I realized this course is actually teaching me a lot more than I had expected from it. It's an academic field, so it's more research oriented. And all research definitely involves statistics. Without statistics, there is no research. And uh, most of my colleagues do not understand statistics at all. So they don't know how to plan their research properly. They don't know how to analyze the data. So they have to outsource it. They have to go meet a statistician. The statisticians do not know biology. They don't know physiology. They don't know anesthesiology, for example. So they cannot actually gain, gain insights that a person who knows both medicine and statistics would gain. So I think that is this is one major thing that I like about what I'm doing right now. And I do help out my colleagues with their statistical analysis every year. Last year, I helped out my seniors, actually. When they bring me data and they tell me what their study is about, I can understand what they're looking for. I can under, I, And I can tell them in uh, what they want to know. Instead of just running standard tests on standard variables, like they're just A and B. So I can treat A and B as what they are. So we had 250 MBBS students. It's a government college. It's a government college, so it's good. It's a good college. But we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have very good infrastructure. They all they do all the bookkeeping very manually. It's old school. So we have a manual attendance register where our office staff will mark P, 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 A, A, and so on. And at the end, for all 250 students, we have to count how many absent days were there. And we have to calculate the percentage of attendance, get, uh, decide their eligibility to take the exam and all of that. It was a really tedious process. And by the end of first year, I had already come to the understanding that if you're doing something repeatedly, manually, by following the same set of rules without real human intervention, it can be automated. It can obviously be automated. So what I did was I basically made a, made a backend on Google Sheets. I made that as the database. I just went to the Streamlit, Streamlit documentation. So it can connect to the Google Docs API. So I made that as my backend. I made front ends for our administrator, as in our office staff, to be able to mark attendance into the app by using the APS itself. And then I made a record viewer for the students to be able to look at their own attendance and see whether they were absent. And if there are any mistakes, they could have they could tell us. They could see their marks. And all of it, since it was on Excel sheets, the calculation for attendance percentages and um, marks eligibility, we had many assessments. So we had to like consolidate them into 20 marks and 30 marks. We have those rubrics. So all of that was done automatically. At the end of the year, my office staff was like, last year I was doing so much. This year, I don't think I did anything at all. So even I didn't do much. It just took me a month or so to make that app and make the workflow. It's not a learning management software, but it, it did all of the basic things that it had to do. So that is very nice. And I'm sort of treated like a tech wizard in my department now. Uh, foundation gives you everything that you need to, uh, it gives you all the theoretical basics. Diploma gives you all the hands-on training. In Diploma, I had a great time competing on the leaderboard for the MLP project. I think I got in fifth with my model at the end. So that was, uh, it was a very satisfying experience. That was one thing. What I'm enjoying here is learning programming also is helping me a lot. In my research, I just finished my thesis data collection and processing actually. In my third year, we have to finish our thesis. And uh, I had collected a lot of data, 80, 80 samples, and all of it was a computerized cognitive testing. And the report was a CSV file. They were all CSV files. So I had 18 to 4, 320 CSV files with just numbers reading out uh, every trial that they did. I'm manually grading that and scoring it is just an impossible task. I think anybody else would have to do that only. And most of the others just stick on to uh, traditional manual cognitive tests. They don't use the computerized ones because they can't understand or process it. 
what i did what i could do was i could handle a lot of participants at the same time because i use multiple laptops and then i just collected data put it all in a google drive folder wrote a simple python script and it did the processing for me so i was able to do that it saved me a lot of time and i think i can do this in the future also it'll help me in my phd it'll it, computers are now doing a lot of work i mean they are doing the work of a lot of humans much faster it is good that and i feel everybody should be able to understand computers be here for learning and learn for yourself not because somebody else is telling you to if somebody else is telling you to learn this maybe you should rethink what you want and pursue that because self motivation is what will keep driving you nothing else all the external motivators are very variable and they can change in your life sometime you might be desperate now for something and you might not be desperate for it later so self motivation should is what should drive you and learn just for learning sake so i think that advice i would definitely give to the freshers or whoever is starting up do not study for the exams at all study for understanding study for knowledge do not rote learn definitely just understand the concept and you will be able to answer and get a cgp of 9 my future goals would be to i don't know i'm thinking i should do a phd i'm considering that right now but i'm not sure maybe i'll do the pg diploma up up to pg diploma here mtech i'm not very sure because i don't know how i'll find a guide for that uh, i am considering that once i finish md physiology i'll be able to uh, join as a senior resident in one of the medical colleges but if i choose a un- choose a university which has medical and engineering i was thinking i could reach out to the engineering departments and ask one of the professors to be my guide i will definitely try that if it is possible i'll finish my mtech also here thank you <laughs>